I recently redesigned lighting around my home. I wanted the living spaces to be evenly lit and well illuminated. Thanks to ideas for lighting design from BBC, I'm gonna include a link here, I wanted to stay away from a bomb shelter lighting where a single light fixture is hung in the middle of the room. The problem with it is that everything is well lit under the light and close to the light but with the distance doubling and tripling the light intensity decreases exponentially so you have very dark very uninviting corners and it's not making a good use of the available space what you're looking at other than my cute seal in the corner there is a test spot in the basement and I have some light bulb competition happening here among different manufacturers I got four of these light bulbs from two manufacturers IKEA, Philips, Philips and that one is also Philips these light bulbs have different designs and different claims I wanted my lighting system to be efficient I don't feel like donating my money to the hydroelectric company for uh, having my living areas well illuminated I'm gonna take some measurements for amperage with a non-contact ammeter with a contact ammeter and with the help of a line splitter that will help me take these measurements and I want to establish which one of these claims is true because some of these claims don't make sense and some there are some differences between these light bulbs okay let's meet the competition here this one is IKEA light bulb 200 lumen its light intensity next one is two LED design next one is Philips one LED design 200 also 200 lumen this one is Philips one LED uh, there's no that's actually sorry that's not an LED in it that's uh, that's a filament that's a traditional filament in it 35 watt but uh, 400 lumen they claim and the last one is also Philips and this one is a 4 LED design and it's a 300 lumen claim now whether it's 200 300 and 400 wasn't a factor what is a factor is that these light bulb be these light bulbs be efficient and uh, since I have 18 of these in my living room like I said I don't want to donate my money for the uh, kilowatt hours to the hydroelectric company so I'm gonna determine the wattage of these bulbs I have the manufacturers claims here 4.5 watts for IKEA 4 watts for uh, the single lens 200 lumen Philips 35 watts on this one and uh, 4.5 watts on this one those are the claims and those are also printed on the light bulbs and also on the packages for example take a look at this one just wait for the camera to focus there we go it says GU10 that's the socket size 4.5 watt 62 milliamps there we go I recorded all of the information there in the claims uh, columns on this chart I created and some of these claims also repeat on the packaging like here 35 watt equals 50 watts I don't know they also claim that this 4 watt LED light will be as uh, effectively lighting up an area as a 35 watt uh, incandescent traditional light bulb I don't know we'll see if it's actually 4 watts now wattage cannot be measured what can be measured is volts and amps and how volts and amps create watts is you have to times volts with the amps super simple grade 4 level math skills on the light bulb they also printed their claimed voltage and their claimed amperage on some of the light bulbs and right away if you multiply 120 with 62 milliamps 62 milliamps would be 0 0.062 
so 120 pi times 0 0.062 you're gonna get something like 7 watts I rounded it down 7 watts and they claim 4.5 on the same light bulb and on the same package so right away the math just isn't there now you might say 7 watts is close enough but again none of these are measured or verified I'm gonna check it because there might be other surprises the same discrepancies found on the one bulb uh, Philips design they claim 47 milliamps if you multiply 120 with 0 0.047 it's gonna get five and a half watts on the Philips uh, one bulb design for the 35 watt bulb they don't even state the amperage but they claim 35 watts I'll measure and calculate and for the last one it's pretty much spot on they claim 120 volts and uh, 38 milliamps and that is actually 4 watts but they claim 4.5 so I'll see what happens for a light bulb to be efficient it should make as little heat as possible and as much light as possible because each light bulb converts the incoming electrical energy into light they should make as much light po as possible and as little hay heat as possible because heat in this sense is waste I know it's good for your heating of your home but in this sense it's waste and is undesirable so I'll get to some measuring and we'll let you know how it turns that turned out there let my cute little seal keep you company non contact temperature measurement is fairly straightforward just set the instrument to infrared and uh, say aim it towards the countertop at a cool spot just to get a baseline there apparently that's the temperature in the kitchen in Celsius and that's what it is in Fahrenheit and then now all the heat is rising from this light bulb so the hottest will be in its middle but if I put the instrument there the instrument will heat up so if I measure it at the base here it's it's too cold to the touch so I kinda have to figure out say a 45 degree angle where I get much of the heat but uh, the instrument doesn't heat up too much and so that would be my approximation there it is in Fahrenheit and there it is in Celsius it is hotter at the at the middle where the heat most of the heat rises but not a whole lot that's that's pretty close I'm gonna repeat that with a contact thermometer a temperature measurement this is a thermistor and that's how this looks like the measuring instrument part and uh, and I'll have both measurements and just so you have a reference line I also going to repeat the same measurements for a traditional or conventional incandescent light bulb a compact fluorescent light bulb and overhead with the neon light that I have here that one this is how the measurements are being taken on a bench and uh, I'm gonna record my numbers here contact and non-contact volts and amps non-contact amps contact and non-contact uh, temperature measurements I show you just some of the stuff here I connect oops, I connect everything and just take a reading on volts this is a true RMS measurement so it's 121.5 volts get recorded for for the 60 watt incandescent contact volts there temperature measurement is fairly straightforward I just have to keep it consistent contact volt 121.3 because it does change it changes all the time it's uh, there 0 0.3 0 0.4 sometimes it's 0.2 this is how contact temperature measurement is going I set up the probe to be exactly at the geometric center of the light bulb and that's the temperature of the light bulb that's a lot hotter 
quite a bit hotter than the non-contact and there it is in Fahrenheit so I just record those ones just like so there that's what I measured non-contact that's what I just measured now and for amps contact amps I have this measurement here set up there we have AC 0 0.5 amps plus change all right ladies and gentlemen the results are in all the calculations are done let's take a look at the situation the winners are mounted in this fixture and the losers are here on the table apparently the losers are these 35 watt equals 50 watt Philips light bulbs with uh, light filament with no LED in it and what uh, happened with my measurements they turned out pretty consistently well I want to mention that my voltage measurement is a true RMS measurement uh, that's, a, that's a root mean square so it's an, an averaging real measurement with with this instrument and uh, this is true RMS there and voltage measurement is a contact measurement so it's really accurate it did interestingly it wasn't 120 volts or 110 as I expected and it, and it changed depending on what was mounted plus or minus half a volt or so minute changes the non-contact amperage measurement was done by this when the wire is running through the middle of the loop here and it doesn't have enough digital de decimal digits to display an, ac an accurate enough number because it's either measuring 400 amps or 40 amps and 40 is, is too much you can see it's the the amperage is that's not 0 0.4 that's 0 0.04 it is extremely small amount of amperage and that's just uh, not really suitable for it I did contact amperage measurement with this one and I selected the milliamps so I measured say 33 milliamps say that would be a measurement I found out right away that that number on the IKEA light bulb is printed wrong they printed the wrong number for some reason but that number is correct it is 4.5 watts all right well actually as I found out it's uh, if you multiply that voltage with that amperage you're gonna get four watts out of it so they rounded it up just to be on the safe side see that's what they did really good light bulbs it runs at 62 degrees you can see most of them runs around 60 something degrees except these people here the losers and uh, and if I run basically any of these cooler light bulbs with LEDs if I run six of them what I wrote here six of them for one hour a day for one month straight these are gonna cost me 18 cents 20 cents 20 cents you know when the kids leave it on for an hour a set of six and uh, instead of 20 cents this one the losers would cost me a dollar 66 now that's not much of a difference for a month but it all adds up because you don't just have six light bulbs you get the idea you do the math the other light bulbs other than this discrepancy here that they printed a super high number for no good reason or so sorry for a super high number for that, that's, that's really unnecessary there because I measured actually 33 amps not 62 I don't know what happened there really good light bulb the cheapest to run the other 200 lumen light bulb the Philips light bulb is uh, taking on a little more current and I measured a little higher voltage it is actually a 4.5 watt bulb instead of a 4 watt bulb I guess they round it down because these people round it up the Philips people in this light bulbs case round it down you can see it runs cool and it's 20 cents to 
run six of them for a month for an hour each day uh, this one the four LED design also Philips I found out that it actually is 4.4 watts so super close to the 4.5 also very cold bulb it runs a little hotter than these two but that's because these are 200 lumen and that's 300 lumen instead of one or two LEDs this one runs uh, on four LED it's taking a little more current and uh, a little higher temperature uh, so but it's still just a two cent difference from uh, the IKEA bulb and yeah the loser that I'm, uh, the one I'm not gonna use is even though it's 400 lumens but it's taking 35 watts exactly as advertised it's actually a little more than that 37 watts I guess they round it down in that case as well it's super hot it's extremely uncomfortable to touch it even after it's cold uh, not exactly cold but even if you let it cool for two minutes or three minutes it's still really uncomfortable to touch it so that's what happened those are my observations yeah well be advised and spend your money as you like it and here are the rest of the numbers just for comparison it turns out the 60 watt bulb is a 60 watt bulb close enough but it runs at a pretty high temperature uh, although nowhere near as hot as the halogen bulb and the 13 watt compact fluorescent is a 13 watt compact fluorescent and it's running at a pretty cool temperature comparable to these LED lights here this one this one or this one but the coolest of them all is the neon it's running at those temperatures however not necessarily the more not the most uh, energy efficient because it still takes more wattage than the compact fluorescent and uh, both of these or any of these are taking more energy than any of the compact uh, little LED bulbs this one this one or this one so that's how the situation looks like with these light bulbs